Red wine. <laughs> Red wine braised beef short ribs. Woof, see that? Sook sturm fish. Hey guys, uh, another episode coming to you today. I've got red wine braised beef short ribs that I'm gonna braise them here on the cooktop and then I'm gonna put them in the oven for about two and a half hours at 330 degrees. So my favorite thing about this recipe is how easy it is. It takes about 20, 25 minutes of prep time at the beginning but then you put it in the oven for two and a half hours and forget it. And it gives, it gives the oven time to really break down the meat's proteins. Uh, make them really fall off the bone, so tender, and I love to serve them on top of mashed potatoes. The first thing you're actually gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna open that bad boy right up and uh, go, ahead and, go ahead and pour your glass. Essentials. If you're not having fun while cooking, you're doing it wrong. Then close that up, because we're not gonna need it for a little while. Okay, so I've got the ribs bone side down first. I'm just gonna take my kosher salt and just give it some love here. Well, you've got them salted. You're gonna want and just pepper them up. And I like to do kind of medium coarseness. Travis got me this really cool pepper grinder for Christmas and it has like five different sizes and I think that's really awesome. On my steaks, I like to do the really big one and for you know, other cuts of meat and mashed potatoes, I like to do like a middle middle grind. I've got um, salt and pepper kind of still on the, the base of the cutting board. So you can actually take and just kind of roll these around and really get all the sides. So I'm gonna use olive oil. I know some people use vegetable oil. Use what's in your cabinet. And I like to do enough to where the bottom of the pan is coated and you know, I pick it up, kind of roll it around, get it all in there. You can see now it's got a nice little sheen on the bottom. And then I will, I will put it on high heat and let that heat up for a second. This is a three hour recipe, so we're gonna have to fill up on something. Um, and might as well have a little wine, get a little silly. Once you eat this, you're just gonna be napping on the couch because it is thick. So for oil in your pan, you're gonna notice it's hot when you can start seeing it ripple. You're gonna want to hear that sizzle. So we're gonna go bone side up first. When you are cooking in a pan like this, you don't want to crowd the pan. That is gonna make the, the meat not cook evenly. For Travis and I and five short ribs, this is the perfect size pan. I'm gonna give them about 45 seconds on each side and then just start flipping them. And if you need to, you can use the edges of the pan to kind of give you a place to rest it because sometimes they fall over. And the reason for searing the short ribs first is not to cook them, it's to add texture. Because if we were to just throw them in the oven, it would almost be like boiled meat, it would be very soft. When we sear them, you're gonna have those crispy bits at the top. You're gonna have just different profiles in that meat, so I think it's really nice to add a different element by searing them. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, those look so good. They already smell so good. So see, I'm gonna use the pan right here to hold them up, because this one is a little, and this one as well. So I'm gonna throw them back on the bone side now that they've been crisped on each side. The heat, I'm just throwing on like super low right now, just while I get everything in the pan. So I'm gonna add just I just pulled it off the eye right now because the eye is what actually is holding the heat. I'm gonna move this tomato puree around just to kind of get it cooked a little. And then I am going to take, and I'm just gonna press this garlic through this zester. For some garlic paste in here. Once you feel like you're close enough to your thumb, you can just throw the rest of garlic in there, it's not gonna hurt it. And a lot of people make like a gravy or something with the, with the sauce after, and I don't think that's, I'm pretty comfortable with that amount of garlic. I'm gonna turn the heat back on, I'm gonna steal all this garlic right here. It's pretty much a paste now. And I'm just gonna let that kind of simmer for a second. I'm back up to medium high heat. So now I'm gonna add some red wine. I'm 
I have just a little layer here. I'm actually gonna do just a bit more. And I'm gonna let this wine deglaze the pan. When you're deglazing the pan, you're just kind of scraping up anything that's on the bottom. We're gonna try and get that back up to boiling. Some of the liquid is gonna evaporate. It's gonna reduce to half of what's in here now. And that's gonna take about 15 minutes. So you're just gonna watch it. You can see it boiling right here. And yeah, it's just gonna evaporate the alcohol out and just really leave that red wine flavor. If you bake something with alcohol in it, it ain't alcoholic anymore. It just ain't. Be you sure to tip else. your cameramen with their own glass of wine. Oh yeah. Cupcake for when you spend all your money on the kitchen and you can't afford good wine. Okay, that's, that, is, it, is it rolling? It's rolling. That brings me to another tip. Don't use good wine on this recipe. You're literally cooking out the alcohol. You need actually the cheapest wine. 265 a bottle, baby. Okay, so I'm about to add the beef broth and I just wanted to show you guys, this is what I use for my broths in the kitchen. I have this for beef, I have chicken, I've got shrimp. And to me, it's just a lot easier than buying one of the big broth containers and letting half of it go to waste. I'm getting two cups of boiling water pretty much just dissolved. I've crushed up my beef cubes, and now I've got beef broth. And if you notice now, we've reduced to about half. Oh yeah. You can tell how it's like, you can't see, you can see now the bottom of the pan. So I'm gonna add beef broth, and I'm gonna add it till it's about right above the bone underneath the short rib. Oops. I'm just gonna do all two cups. These are kind of tall. Okay, so now I've got the, the broth boiling. I've added the beef broth in there, it's boiling. I'm gonna turn the heat off. I'm gonna throw a lid right on there and I'm gonna throw it right in the oven at 330 degrees for two and a half hours. Ready at 802. A recipe by Kenna. Red wine braised beef short ribs. 25 minute prep time. Total, three hours. <laughs> just kidding, that's not what I want to do, but I did want to do it, so I did it. Okay, so I've just put the short ribs in the oven. You've got about two and a half hours to do whatever you'd like. For us, that's about the perfect time to catch a movie, so I'm gonna have a glass of wine with my husband, and we're gonna go chill on the couch and watch a movie. We'll see you guys in two and a half hours. Watch a movie. <laughs> I have a headache. <laughs> 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 Oh, goodness gracious, those look good. Got some falling off the bone right there. Okay, let's get them plated, shall we? We'll pick them up and I'm just gonna press them into these potatoes. That's how I like to do them. So I'm just gonna throw some parsley on top of here. I'm just gonna pull it straight off the stem and kind of feather it on top. Mm, these look so good. They are fork tender, cooked perfectly delicious looking crust on the outside from that earlier sear that we did. <laughs> oh my God. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. That is seriously. <laughs> That's all you have to say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but this recipe is seriously like a secret in your back pocket when you're um, hosting for a big crowd. You can sear, you know, if you get a really big roasting tray and maybe you put it on one full side of your stove. You can sear all of these short ribs on that roasting tray for all of your guests. Keep it all in one, one dish, throw it in the oven, and then hang out with your guests for two and a half hours or go take a nap or get some more chores done around the house. But it comes out just so magnificent. And, and the flavors, there are so many different depths and so many different uh, textures. And, and I can taste the red wine. I can taste the tomato puree. Um, just just perfectly enough so so anyway i'm i'm pleased i'm pleasantly pleased with these pleasantly, pleasantly pleased with these yeah no i they're so good i'm rushing to get done because it is eight o'clock and we're hungry so i'm so glad you guys stuck around i hope you guys enjoyed the recipe if you try it i hope you let me know how you liked it in the comments and i hope to see you guys soon because i'm very excited we're going to come at you more with a lot more tips and there goes Dozer. <laughs> so, 
If you guys making his cameo. He's making his cameo. He's like, don't forget me. I've been neglected in the kitchen as well. 